Hello, okay, so here's the thing. Hopefully by now you kind of have a sense of the principle of encapsulation and the idea of making a template to create objects. Item number one. Item number two is maybe you have a sense of what the syntax for writing a class is, that template. Constructor, initializing some variables that are attached to that object, writing some functions that are the functionality of that object. The reason why you might want to do this is because one reason why is just to kind of organize your code. Ultimately, I, don't, I could make this exact sketch without all this class and constructor and all that. I just could make some variables. But one of the nice things about this is I have two things on the screen. I don't have two x's and two y's. I just have two bubble objects. Because imagine if these things have a speed and an x speed and a y speed and a color and a radius. You know, I don't want to have 15 sets of variables for everything I have to make. I want one set of 15 to apply to a bunch of things. But one of the things that I've done here that's not really scalable or sustainable in a, in a way that's going to be as useful is, you know, what if I want these, but right now they, they do move independently of each other, which is nice, but they always start at the same spot. Now I could change their starting location to be random, but what if I want to specify where they should start or specify a size? So one of the ways to do that is I want to say, I often want to say, ah, what I would like to do is not just make a bubble, but I would make, like to make a purple bubble, or a blue bubble, or I would like to make a fast bubble, or a large bubble, or a small bubble. I want to be able to modify the way that I create an object. And the way that I do that is by adding stuff inside here. I add arguments to the constructor. New bubble with a radius of 50 and an xy of 70 comma so uh, let me do it the other way. Let's imagine that what I want, I want one bubble to be at 200 comma 200, and I want it to have a radius of 40, and I want the other bubble to be at 400 comma 200, and I want it to have a radius of 20. Now, one of the weird things about JavaScript <laughs> is, again, it just wants to work. So I could add, all, add that, and I could run this code, and I don't know, <laughs> what, it still works, it does exactly the same thing. So those numbers go nowhere. But the idea is just like if you watch my video about passing arguments to a function, um, I can pass arguments to a constructor. And if I do that, what I want is for the constructor to receive those arguments. So if I'm giving it three arguments, 200, 240, I need to define the constructor with three parameters. I think I'm getting this right. These are the arguments the values, the things that are passed in. These are the parameters, the variables that go inside the actual definition of the function, in this case, the constructor. So I'm going to add an x, a y, and an r. So I'm going to say this.x equals x, this.y equals y, and you know what? I'm going to create a new variable called r, this.r equals r, and then in draw, I'm going to actually say Oh, I almost just typed r times 2. I almost just typed r times 2. I need to say this dot. And actually, in P5, with the ellipse function, if you want the width, the diameter along the width and the height to be the same, I don't only need one value. So now what I should do, right, if I run this, we can see I should be making two bubbles with different starting locations and a different radii, radius. So look, those started at the right location. Ah, the size looks the same. What did I get wrong here? Uh, hmm, missing semicolon, 40, 20, list.r times 2. Hey, it really should be different, right? Oh, they are. I don't know. I just probably forgot to hit save. So you might be looking at this and thinking, oh god, this is like the most awful thing I've ever saw, seen. You named those variables x the same as the this.x? Um, and, 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 and actually, if you look at some of my examples in previous programming environments that I've used, I often will do something called this temp x, temp y. This is one of the most confusing aspects of programming with uh, classes and creating objects. And then this would have to be temp x, right? That would have to be temp y and temp r. Is that these variables inside the constructor, they're temporary local variables just for the sole purpose of receiving the value and quickly passing it to the variable that counts. So this.x is the variable that counts. It's actually the thing that I'm going to use to keep track of where the object is and draw it and move it, but I, I can't access it directly from up here. I mean, there are ways that I could, but they would be weird and they, they wouldn't necessarily be, make, make any more sense. 
So I want this 200 to go into this dot x. I need something to temporarily receive it, like temp x, and then quickly pass it to x. So, but I, maybe I have a bad habit, but um, I like, I actually just like to name these the same name because I know that which one's which by whether there's a this dot or not. But you will see that um, conventions like this, or name them with an underscore, or an underscore after, or, uh, or with a temporary, you know, you can come up with your own style, but it's important to realize that these are all just things that I've made up, like unicorn, uh, fluffy, uh, rainbow. And this code, which, you know, in many ways has its advantages, unicorn, I, I'm going to just play this whole thing out, fluffy, rainbow, just to sh prove the point here, this works as well, it's the same exact result. The question is, what kind of variable naming convention makes sense to your brain? And being consistent kind of helps. And there are, you can follow other people's conventions and styles, but I would say there are no real rules here. And if you want to name your variables unicorn, fluffy, rainbow, pink, fluffy, unicorns, jump, whatever it is, I got it wrong. But um, it's fluffy unicorns, not fluffy rainbows. But you should make a fluffy, somebody make a fluffy rainbow p 5 jazz sketch. It's going to be awesome. Share it with me. Okay. Um, so. I got a little off track there, um, but the, the point of it is, whatever I, d whatever I put in here, if I say bubble 200, it gets sent all the way to the constructor definition, some variable, it's like saying let x equal, it's like I'm initializing x with this value 200, it goes in here, and this just, if I have this here, exists solely to set this value so that I can use it later. So that's the real purpose of these temp constructor parameters, to receive arguments and pass them to variables. Of course, you can use them in all sorts of other ways. You don't have to follow this exact design pattern, but it is kind of a, a typical standard one. So if you're watching this video, uh, what I would suggest to you is um, see, see what else you can add to this. C can you add a color? What's the difference between making the color random for every bubble versus initializing each bubble with a color? Uh, what other properties can you add to this? Play around, can you add another function? Like, can you add a function called like edges that do something when the bubble reaches the edges? Is, is this even really a bubble? What does it mean to be a bubble if we answer that question? I don't think so. So try to add your own constructor arguments, add additional constructor arguments, and see uh, what questions you have and let me know. Uh, thanks very much for watching.